The scripture portion for today's reflection is from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 18 verses 12. Matthew chapter 18 verses verse 12. What do you think if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray? Does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? Here begins the reading. Let us look to God in prayer. Now and also when I am old and grey-headed, O God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Based on the red passage, I have entitled my sermon as Not to be lost, a prophetic imagination. Not to be lost, a prophetic imagination. The parable of the lost sheep is found in both the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew. But both versions produce unique nuances and understandings. In Luke's Gospel, the Pharisees and scribes are Jesus' stated audience, whereas in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is addressing his disciples. Matthew's Gospel is set in the context of advice regarding relationships within the community and, in effect, is instructing church leaders, pastors, that they should care similarly. Matthew wants hearers to learn from the shepherd. The parable of the lost sheep is often interpreted as the lost sheep as a wayward sinner who has strayed, seduced by the worldly pressures, and ensnared in a life apart from the righteous flock. Alternatively, some focus on the phrase least one interpreting it as a call to include the poor, the needy and the marginalized individuals in the community and to treat them with respect and dignity. While these interpretations are valuable, I invite you to consider a different perspective today that reflects our present context. What if the lost sheep is not a wayward sinner but rather a righteous one who has become disillusioned and left the flock? What are the 99 of those who have lost their way, blinded by tradition and complacency? We often find ourselves trying to figure out the answers to the questions like, why did the sheep leave the 99 to find the one lost sheep? Why did he leave the 99 on the mountains? Why did he leave the 99 in the desert? What kind of shepherd is he? What kind of love does he have for the sheep? Along with these questions, I think it is also important to ask, why would the sheep leave the flock? Who is responsible for that sheep's action? This righteous sheep, the righteous one, is wandering apart from the flock, seeking authenticity and truth. It seeks a community where love transcends caste, fellowship transcends favoritism, not merely seeking an alternative. It is our quest for genuine discipleship, a place where the word of God is preached with power and clarity, where prayers are fervent, and where every individual <coughs> is valued as a child of God. It desires to be a part of a church that reflects the heart of Christ, a church willing to confront its shortcomings and pursue holiness. When the sheep finds a place in an independent congregation, we often label that as a stolen sheep, or claim that the sheep has been taken by the sheep stealers. Or we call that act as a proselytization. We may perceive this sheep as an invisible, lost, unfaithful, or misguided. However, in reality, the sheep is simply seeking a pasture that truly nourishes it. We cannot deny the fact that many of our churches are caught in a web of administration that prioritizes selfish ambitions over spiritual nourishment. In recent years, we have been witnessing this struggling trend. People are leaving our traditional mainline churches to seek spiritual sustenance in independent congregations. Why? The answer lies not in the desire to stray, but in our failure to provide the spiritual food they desperately need. We often take pride in our administrations, sometimes pointing fingers at other denominations and claiming that, unlike them, we have an excellent 
management. Yes, indeed, we have the best administrative system. However, it is worth noting that we have managed to earn a distinct title of having our administration labeled as corrupt by none other than a Supreme Court judge. What a price. We often criticize leaders of other denominations for lacking accountability in their operative practices, claiming that we have a system that ensures our accountability. However, we should not overlook our own grand ceremonies, those magnificent ordination events where our moderators and bishops are elevated to their thrones that will even make the politicians and royalty envious. Very much fascinating. But those same prominent figures occasionally make headlines, nothing related to the pro uh, persecution about their faith, but rather for less than a holy activities like money laundering and misappropriation of funds. We often criticize other denominations for being exclusive, exclusive, taking pride in our commitment to inclusivity. However, we must confront the reality that for the selfish ambition of a few, we are permitting the establishment of caste-based churches and caste-based favoritisms and postings. Is this truly the inclusivity? We have been told of such reasons behind the exodus of many single sheep from the mainland churches. You name it, we count them one by one. As we consider the 99 sheep in our present context, many church goers, those 99 sheep, may find themselves trapped in a cycle of routine, attending services without engaging in a meaningful discipleship. The 99 may be lost in their own way, caught up in routine rather than reconciliation, in comfort rather than conviction, in tradition rather than transformation. In this case, they too are lost, needing the shepherd's guidance to awaken them to their purpose. Let me conclude. The Gospel of Thomas presents this parable in another way. Thomas states, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. One of them, the largest, went astray. He left the ninety-nine and looked for that one until he found it. When he had gone to such trouble, he said to the sheep, I care for you more than the ninety-nine. The prophetic imagination for today goes beyond real restoration. It calls us to reflect deeply on our shortcomings as servants of God in nourishing God's flock. Rather than focusing on bringing back the so-called lost sheep, we must first seek to restore ourselves. God is seeking that one righteous sheep, the largest among the 99, not just for its sake, but for the sake of all the lost 99. Let God take care of that missing sheep. If God wills, let God bring it back. If the sheep has found a better pasture to nourish its soul, then we praise happily there. Some of you may find this perspective totally one-sided, but my dear friends, let us focus on the law in our own eye, let us speak in our neighbor's eye. Grace be with you all. Amen.